Hello, in this part we will continue tickless mode within FreeRT OS uh, using CMC's OS. This time uh, we will try to involve uh, say the semaphores to wake up our system a bit before than expected. We will create a simple example using one task, one semaphore and uh, stop mode which would be used uh, once the task is in a blocked state. For my exercise, uh, I would uh, use two boards. One is Nucleo L476RG, this is the white one which you can see on the screen. Then, to measure the current consumption on real time, I would use uh, X Nucleo LPM01 board. Both boards are connected by two wires, which you can see. This is, let's say, black and uh, red one. Black one is connecting GNDs of the both boards on, uh, let's say, X Nucleo, this blue one board. I'm using CN14 connector, pin 1, counting from the glass LCD, and uh, on the Nucleo board uh, L476RG I'm using um, the GND pins which are located on both sides on the USB connector on top of the board. Then the plus wire, the red one, is connecting CN14 pin number 3, counting from the glass LCD, and the left pin of JP6, which has been removed for this exercise. In case you would like to use the multimeter, you can connect the multimeter configured within the current uh, measurement uh, section, the one microamp range, and uh, you can connect it uh, directly to JP6 on the Nucleo L476 Edge port. Okay, uh, for the software, I would use uh, STM32Cube IDE for the let's say configuration and code manipulation, and uh, STM32Cube monitor power to monitor the power consumption of the board. I would start with stm 32 cube IDE by creating a new project. So I go to File, New, see stm 32 project. You can use as well stm 32 cube mix and uh, your preferred toolchain. I'm creating a new project for stm 32 l 476 rg board. RG, yes. I would name it as 14 underscore tickless underscore stop underscore sem from semaphore okay okay so from hardware point of view we would need the following peripherals first i would start from the debug so system core says and the debug the last option, so trace asynchronous SW to have debug interface SWD and serial wire output. Then I will change the time base source from Cystic to Timer 6. This would be the timer used by the HAL library functions. And within RCC I would uh, enable LSE clock, which would be used by the low power timer. Then the next stop, uh, next point would be to enable and configure ti low power timer. So I go to timers section. I would select low power timer 1 in mode counts internal clock events. Then I would enable its interrupt. And within its parameter settings, I would change the clock prescaler to divide by 32. I would like to have the clock source for this timer LSE 32 kHz oscillator and then I would divide it by 32 so the time base for my low power timer would be 1 kHz clock. To change the time base, the clock source for this low power timer, I will go to clock configuration tab. As you can see we are working with on, on 4 MHz. Below I can see the multiplexer for low power timer clock selection. So instead of peripheral clock 1, I would select LSE. I will come back to pinouts and configuration and within the pinouts I would select uh, PC13 so I click left button on mouse and select the last option GPIO XT13 as I would like to use this pin as an external interrupt which uh, would be used to give the semaphore which we would wait for. Ok, to finalize this point I would go to NVIC section, so system core NVIC, and I would enable this interrupt line by ticking this field. I would like to use this function within freer ties, so I would change its uh, priority to level 5. 
I would explain it in a while why it is number five. Next point it's selection of free RTOS. So I go to middlewares, uh, free RTOS, interface CMC's v2. Uh, within the let's say config parameters, I would enable tickless idle to build in functionality. Then within tasks and queues, I would rename this default task to task one. I would change uh, its stack size to 256 words and its entry name to start task one. I would keep the same priority, so OS priority normal. Then I would add as well the semaphores. So within timers and semaphores I and the binary semaphores tab, I would add uh, the semaphore. I would keep the default name. Okay, let's come back for a while to these config parameters. If I scroll down, I can see that uh, I've got two interrupt nest, uh, nesting behavior configuration parameters. The first one is related to Sysdig, PentSV, and uh, yeah, those two responsible interrupts responsible to, let's say for context switch. And this is the lowest possible priority within this architecture. The second one is uh, related to the interrupts which would be able to call operating system functions. So all of the interrupts uh, with uh, priority from 5 to 15 would be able to call the interrupt uh, operating system functions. Those with higher priority, so 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, should not do this due to the safety of the complete system. This is why I selected for my external interrupt mm, number 5, because I would like to use one of the operating system functions, uh, semaphore give in fact, from this interrupt routine. That's it concerning the configuration of the complete complete system and uh, hardware components. So I would generate the code now. Okay, we can open main.c file, it should be uh, done automatically. If not, please go to core source main.c and now we will do some code processing. Let's start uh, from main.c file and uh, our task uh, entry function. Uh, so I would start from our famous sign of life application code so it will be task action and we will implement it within section user code 4 it is after main function okay so it is here and I would use ITM interface send char and uh, let's say it will be first message and sign of new line that's it then uh, we need to implement our delay task uh, one uh, function body instead of OS delay which has been used in previous exercises uh, I would just wait for the semaphore so semaphore acquire so we'll try to get the semaphore for maximum five seconds. So the effect would be very similar to what we've got in the past. So we will wait maximum five seconds for the semaphore. If not, we will wake up and give the sign of life. And uh, we will stay for half a second in uh, either run or ready state. If a semaphore will be available before this, let's say, timeout occurs, we will wake up earlier and perform the same operations. So this is the first part of our job. The second part would be implementation of the external interrupt callback. To do this, uh, we'll go for a while into the stm32l4xx underscore it.c file. And here is our external interrupt handler. So I go and click on the right button on mouse, open declaration, and you see that we would need this callback. It is defi defined as weak, so we can copy paste it within our code. And we can put it in the same section like, uh, let's say, task action. And within this, we will just, let's say, release the semaphore. So OS semaphore release and this is our handler 
we can add here as well a sign of life. That's it. So concerning main.c file, those are, let's say, all modifications. Uh, we need uh, to configure a bit, uh, let's say, press slip mode and post slip mode within freertos.c file. This would be our next uh, step. Let's uh, go to freertos.c file. And within this, uh, I would start with export of my low power timer handler. And then uh, we can implement our uh, code like uh, in previous exercises. So first I would like to suspend tick. So our timer six, so it will not generate uh, wake up uh, signals. And then we need to specify timeout function to let's say configure our low power timer one to let's say wake up us on some configured delay. Time, time, time out. So let's use it with interrupt mode handler period. So auto reload register maximum value and then the expected idle time it would be this one. And similar operations we will do in opposite way below. So first I will stop low power timer one not using of course a start but stop only one argument is needed and we will resume our timer 6 so uh, tick timer for hull hull hl underscore resume tick and that's it. So there are more all modifications within freertos.c file. So I can switch to port.c file when I need to, let's say, replace the slip mode into the stop one. So I go to middleware's third party freertos source portable GCC arm CM4F and port C. First, I would add main main dot c dot h sorry and then so let's say line 500 something i need to first stop this stick with this within this line and replace this line with the stop Call to stop. So hull p w r e x, and we need to enter enter stop one mode and stop entry. In case we are not sure, we can go to the declaration, and in our case it will be wfi. So interrupt. That's it. So after those modifications, and I can try to compile the code. Okay, no worries, no warnings. Uh, let's uh, try to start a debug session. Before we will start a debug session, I will start the cube monitor power. Just to do it uh, together with you, I would uh, start it from scratch. So I click on the cube monitor power icon. It is visible at the beginning like this. So we need first to configure to select, let's say, the COM where our X nucleo LPM01 is connected. In my case, it's with 20, 21st. Then I need to press take control, specifying the sampling frequency to maximum possible value and acquisition time infinite just to not be stopped in the middle of the measurement. I can press start acquisition and now I can start a debug session. So I go to Cube IDE, I click on the back icon. I will check whether everything is configured properly. So I select the debugger. I would uh, disable debug in low power mode to save some power. I will not enable, let's say, a serial wire viewer in this case. So you will not see anything on ITM interface. 
this is why it would be better for the ex exercise to toggle LED but uh, anyway we will see some activity uh, even without any, any sign of life I would uh, start a debug session then let's resume then terminate as we will not observe anything on the debugger as it is using stop mode and let's have a look uh, what we can see on the cube monitor power as you can see uh, the application is working like expected so we can see the five seconds of uh, delay where we are within the, in, in the stop one mode in between there is this wake up after more or less let's say four seconds due to the overflow of the cystic and our activity lasts uh, half a second uh, where this task action function is executed and now uh, i would uh, press a button so you will see an effect i press the button and you can see we have been woken up a bit before and after this uh, let's say the operations has been performed so let's say giving the let's say the semaphore from the interrupt callback and then uh, sending sign of life uh, we are performing um, let's say the the code from the task which has been waiting for uh, for the semaphore so it is uh, let's say w if we add uh, this execution time of the interrupt callback and uh, um, let's say our task it's, it is it is visible as uh, uh, let's say a bit longer time in active mode so let me stop it for a while and now you can see the first uh, let's say wake up uh, is due to the press of the button then there is a short time uh, used by the interrupt and after this interrupt we are waking up the system for half a second and uh, this uh, let's say we've got this half a second of our task execution i press the button uh, much before let's say the maximum timeout we are expecting so we can see the same procedure just after and then um, i was not pressing anything this is why we can see this overflow uh, the, the interrupt caused by the overflow of the of the cystic and then just after we could see let's say the wake up uh, due to that let's say this maximum delay specified in the wait for semaphore function uh, call so as you can see it is working like expected tickless mode uh, is uh, let's say working uh, so we are in a in a low power mode uh, all the time for the specified delay unless uh, there is some interrupt coming which could wake up us and um, we could perform some other operations within our active tasks so that's all for this exercise thank you for watching this video